Hand you a mic. Your um, attached one doesn't seem to be working, so people can't hear you online. Thank you. So, should I go back or just? Con can you hear me now? Great. All right. So, let's say we have 40 members and we have four GPUs. Now, each of the members has his own GPU, and then comes a new member. Now, you, as the manager, probably think that you need more GPUs. And let's go through all the things that are happening while you're out there on the journey of getting these more GPUs that you need. So first of all, you're sure that you're letting the new member down because you remembered only last minute that you need these GPUs. You start fighting the IT department to get these more GPUs, even though you already have a few. You have to explain your boss why the new project is being delayed. And all this time, the new member is waiting for her GPU resources. Now, trust me, this, this is how I look when I wait for my resources. And the truth is that you don't always need more GPUs. When the new team member comes, instead of getting more GPUs, you just, you, um, I'm sorry. So the truth is that you don't always need more GPUs, and we'll see why. So, first of all, not all the tasks require all the resources that a user gets. Some tasks are just smaller. Now, secondly, some of the work is being done out of the GPU, leaving the GPU unused. For example, writing code or building the model. Also, some GPU workloads have heavy CPU and I.O. tasks. In addition to that, people take breaks. Now, this could be a short 10-minute coffee break, lunch, or even entire days off. During this time, the resources could be unused almost entirely. And generally speaking, 
not all the resources are being properly used. So instead, when the new team member comes, instead of getting more GPUs, what you want is just to use these idle GPU resources. Now, until now, I, I was talking about a team of people sharing GPUs. But this is exactly the same case for a Kubernetes cluster running different AI workloads. Because very similarly to people, different AI workloads are not identical. They have different loads and different resource consumption. Now, it took us quite some time to fully understand why it's so hard to, to fully utilize a GPU. But I think that now we can say that there are two fundamental reasons for it. The first one is that many GPU usage patterns are underutilized by definition. For example, when you do remote debugging with VS Code or PyCharm, when you write code interactively with a Jupyter Notebook or just a Python shell, when you have idle AI workloads just waiting for new requests, and when you have just not so heavy tasks like small models or small batch sizes. The second fundamental reason is that GPUs are being provisioned statically and coarse grained. This means that most of the time you will see a GPU being provisioned for either a user or an AI workload. In order to overcome these challenges, GPUs must be provisioned in a smarter way. They have to be provisioned dynamically. And this means not a GPU per user or per single AI workload. Additionally, they should be provisioned in a finer grain, for example, fractions of GPUs. And they also be over-provisioned. This means that you should run more workloads than the available GPUs, very similarly to other resources like CPU memory and storage devices. Now, unfortunately for us, Kubernetes does not support over-provisioning of GPUs. It also does not support fractional provisioning of GPUs. But luckily for us, it does provision our GPUs in a dynamic way. Now, if you're not using Kubernetes just yet, for example, if you're running on the host machine directly or over SSH, we created the right tool for you. We call it GNV, and it stands for GPU Environment Management. It's 100% free and open source. It is highly inspired by existing environment management software like PyEnv, Conda, and others, and it works in a very similar way and it helps people to provision their GPUs in a smarter way. Now, GPU, uh, GNV sorry, is a terminal-based tool, just like PyEnv and Conda, but we did create integration to common IDEs. We have an extension for VS Code, we have an extension for JupyterLab, and we are working on creating a plugin for PyCharm as well, so that every GPU user can use their GPUs in a smarter way, natively in his or her working environment. GNV and all these extensions are open source and are available on our GitHub page. And I recommend you to go check them out and see if it can be useful for your team. Now, going back to Kubernetes. We said that Kubernetes does provision GPUs in a dynamic way. But the problem is that it does it in a pod granularity. This means that most of the time you will see one GPU provisioned for one pod. And when this pod gets scheduled, a GPU is assigned to it. And as long as the pod is alive, this GPU cannot be reassigned to other pods, even if the GPU is idle and not used because any of the reasons that we saw earlier. Now, this must be changed if we want to fully utilize GPUs. Furthermore, even with the smartest provisioning mechanism, the provisioning, smart provisioning is not enough because GPU resources should not be an afterthought. The point in time in which we deploy an AI workload to production cannot be the first time that we ask ourselves how, much, how many GPU resources do we need. The GPU resource requirements should be properly defined 
in the development phase of the project. Just like any other project dependency, for example, Python packages or a Docker base image. And I truly believe that they should be specified in, as infrastructure, as code. Now, if you use GN for your project, it allows you to save the research requirements as code as part of your Git repository. Okay, so the truth is that there is no magic button for these problems. We have to change our mindset. And now after we have a better understanding of it, I'm gonna pass it to Natasha and she will continue with the second part. Thank you, Raz. Okay, so now that we understand the problem, our responsibilities and the power we have in our hands. But where does it leave us? What can we actually do about it? Well, you cannot improve what you don't know. So the first thing we need to do is to get a better view and to better understand the GPU utilization in our cluster. So uh, we want to know if we have some idle GPUs, see if we have pending workloads. So let's drill down and see. Are you really out of GPUs? Now going back to the case of AI workloads in a Kubernetes cluster, we know that different workloads have different loads and different resource consumption. But how can we actually measure it in reality? You guessed right, it's GPU utilization. So this is the official definition of GPU utilization, but de facto just means how much the GPU is being used. So the utilization is low or even zero, it means the GPU is not being fully used. So um, in order to detect low utilizations in a cluster, um, we want to detect low utilizations in a cluster. Let's see how we can do it. So I'll just say this, if you have a cluster with uh, server and GPUs but you have not installed Kubernetes yet and you're considering it, you can use our job, it's running on its open source top-like tool for monitoring GPUs in cluster over SSH. We don't have time to look, look at it today, but it's really cool so you can take a look at it. But for our test case now, we do have a Kubernetes cluster. So let's say we have two nodes, four GPUs each, eight total. Now, let's get a better look of what's going on on those GPUs. So this is the dashboard we built. Uh, we're not going to go over everything here in just a few minutes, but what is the first thing that I want you to know? So we have eight allocated GPUs out of eight total right now. And what do we see on the right? The problem. We said before we have a problem, now we can actually see it. We have two pending pods that request a GPU and are not allocated due to lack of resources. But at the same time, we have two GPUs that are allocated by pods that are not using them. And they are idle. So this is a big problem. Now I want us to go a little bit to back, back and I want, to, I want to explain how I built this dashboard. And then we'll go back. So to identify idle GPUs, we need to know the GPU utilization of each GPU at a certain moment. So if the GPU utilization is zero and there is a running pod on the GPU, it will be idle allocated. And probably one of the most expensive GPUs you have in the cluster, you're paying for it and you can't even use it. So we need some sort of component to export this data for us. Luckily for us, we have open source tools that can help us with this. So we have NVIDIA's DCGM exporter. It's a daemon set that exports metrics about GPUs on the loop. If you are working with GPUs in Kubernetes, you probably already have it installed as part of NVIDIA's GPU operator. We also have Prometheus, which I'm sure you've all heard about. Uh, it's a monitoring system that collects and stores metrics. We also have Grafana, that comes built in with Prometheus. Um, it allows us to build the dashboards like the one we saw earlier. So they're all easy to install and easy to use. They have a 3D UI and everything. I installed them on my Kubernetes cluster and I opened the Prometheus UI. Now take a deep breath, we're going to deep dive into some technology for a few minutes. So this is a screenshot from Prometheus UI, just raw metrics without the font. This is the metric we are interested in. DCGM FI dev GPU util. It comes from the DCGM exporter. Each record here stands for a different GPU. 
And the value is digitization. It's a percentage, so the value would be between 0 and 100. And the labels of, of the metrics give us more information about each GPU, so we're able to identify it. So for example, we have the Kubernetes node of the GPU. We also have its UUID and GPU index on the, on the node. And if there's a pod running on the GPU, we'll have the pod name and namespace. And if there's no pod running on the GPU, those labels will just be empty. Now, out of all the records here, we are interested in the ones that actually have a pod running on them. So we can use PromQL, which is Prometheus query language, to perform some queries on the metrics. So this is how we filter on the desired results. See if we use a non-empty pod label, and those records here stand for the GPUs with a pod running on them. And also we would like to filter on the idle allocated GPUs, so we want the utilization to be zero which means the metrics value equals zero. So this is also from QL. Um, and there you have it. Those are the idle allocated GPUs. They have a pod running on them, and utilization is zero. So I used some more from QL to aggregate all this data out of this metric and other metrics as well. And then I put it in this uh, Grafana dashboard. Um, it's also open source, of course. You can take a look at it later to see exact Prometheus queries they use and how I put it in Grafana. So now that we understand where this data is coming from, we can analyze what we see. So here we have the amount of idle allocated GPUs and below the pods that are uh, running on those GPUs. And here we have the pending, G pending pods that request the GPU. So we can also know how many GPUs each pod is requesting or has idle. Now, if each user or team will use a different namespace, which is a good nice practice, uh, yeah, um, then we will know the owner of those idle GPU pods. And we can kindly contact them and ask them to delete their pods, or maybe delete them by ourselves if we have the permissions for it. And we can also know the uh, owners, the, the users who submitted the pending pods, so we can maybe know who's going to be angry with us about their non-running workloads that we want to be executed. Now I want us to look at a slightly different case. Here the cluster is not full. We have six GPUs allocated out of eight total. Now some organizations might not even know this information that they have available GPUs. They're not idle allocated because there's no pod running on them. They're just available. So it's an easier problem. And I know it sounds funny, but you should just execute more workloads. Use your available GPUs, you pay good money for them. These graphs give us a good visualization of the GPU utilization. So here we have the GPU utilization over time. Each line stands for a different GPU. And you can adjust that time span on top of the refund page. And you can, uh, so it can be like the last five minutes or the last 24 hours, whatever you want. Also, we have the average GPU utilization out of all GPUs in the cluster. And we have the running pods that allocate the GPU with its utilization. So, now that we have all this data, we understand the GPU utilization, we can see it and visualize it. What can we actually do about it? Well, the first thing and the easy thing, and we said that already, we can delete the idle GPU pods. So, either the user or the admin that if they both have access to the dashboard. Another thing we can try to do is to avoid the idle GPU pods in the first place. So for example, when you run a process inside a Jupyter notebook and you press the little run button, and then the process finishes and the notebook stays open and allocates an idle GPU. So instead, you can finish working on your model inside a Jupyter notebook. But when, to, when you want to execute it long term, you can run it as a Kubernetes job. In that way, when the process inside finishes, the pod and the job will terminate, and the, the GPU will be available for other pods. And that way, the pending pods we saw earlier, for example, can start running and this is our goal. So, let's summarize. We understood the problem and presented some easy steps we can do to improve the situation. But it takes more. You need to look behind the scenes. 
Maybe think of a better work process, one that suits you and your organization. We have all this data presented in the dashboard um, that can help you get a better understanding of the GPU utilization. So you can use the dashboard, deploy it, change it, add more information to it, adapt it to your needs, maybe use Grafana alerts. The power is in your hands. Only after we do all that, we can continue to the next steps, which is, for example, smart provisioning, smart scheduling, increasing the utilization of existing models, but we don't have time to talk about it today. Yeah, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, as we said during the presentation, everything we mentioned, every tool is open source and available on our GitHub page. And we'd love to hear more from you about the way that you use GPUs and the problems that you encounter. So here are our email addresses. Feel free to contact, contact us. We will also be at the Run AI booth, booth number S63. So just walk by in the next couple of days and we'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, thank you, Raz and Natasha. Excellent talk. Um, yeah, I'll open up to questions. Um, okay, oh, there are loads. Oh, that's, that's, I was actually going to ask one, but I better, better let the audience do them first. Why don't you go first? Um, I just had a question about it strikes me that if you're going to do it dynamically, you may, you may need to know the length of time somebody's going to use the pod mm -hmm. um, in order to, so that you're not switching them, right? Or if, if it's idle and then the person who owns it, the way you've described it is very like you take it back. So now that first person no longer has access to a GPU. I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, so that's a great question. Yeah, I can, uh, I can try to answer. Well, obviously, if you see like uh, the, the pod is idle right now, don't hurry up and delete it right now. You can, I mean, models have some idle time, then they go back to being not idle. But if you see like um, a pod being idle for a day or for a long time, and you, maybe you, you don't have to know that this person went on vacation, you just see it's idle on the dashboard, then you can delete it. And yeah, the person will lose access to the GPU, but well, they shouldn't, in the first place, execute workloads that have idle GPUs for 24 hours. So it's like, our, our approach is like, their problem. If I, if I may add, so um, what you suggested is a, is a great idea. It's a bit too simple and naive. I mean, it would be beneficial. You can specify the amount of time that you think that a pod is going to run so that the orchestration system as a hint to the orchestration system. But this is too simple when you're talking about big, big clusters with many different AI workloads. So what you would want to have is a system that would automatically detect idle resources and idle pods and will take these resources and bring them automatically to other pods. So this would be a great idea, but it's too naive. It, it, I'm, I'm sorry, it might be too naive, and we're looking for more advanced ways to, to even improve it without specifying hints priorly. One challenge we've had with using the GCGM metrics is that utilization is actually defined as if you've done one CUDA operation in the last one second. So you could do a CUDA mem copy, and you get utilization. Um, I'm kind of curious if you've been able to develop anything else deeper to actually understand how many CUDA cores are really left and like, quote unquote, how much you can push the GPU more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's a great question because the GPU utilization might be um, misleading because as you said, it might be also too naive because if you do something very small on, G on the GPU, every sampling window, then it might seem that you have high GPU utilization. Now, this is an inherited problem with looking at GPU utilization. Uh, there might be other metrics that could be um, created, for example, to understand the size of the CUDA calls that are running. Um, there are technologies of NVIDIA, for example, MPS, that allows you to have a bit more understanding about them. And you have also profiling tools from NVIDIA uh, that 
will help you to further understand how much you actually do use your GPU. Now, GPU utilization is just a very basic metric, but it gives you at least 80% into the direction that you're heading. So I'm curious what you see as the, uh, the future, the roadmap of time slicing or context switching of GPUs. That does seem like the holy grail. Uh, I'm a system operator, not a you know, data en engineer. So you know, what I see as a system operator is, well, why aren't we treating our GPUs like CPUs with multi-threading and time slicing and stuff? And what do you guys see as the the future of this? Is this like around the corner? Is it decades away? Like wh where is the technology going? Okay, so th this is another g great question. So yeah, I think the way we see it is that we believe that we can have a system that automatically detects the idleness and the resource com consumption in real time. And then just like any other more mature resources, for example, CPU cores or CPU memory, that they've been here for decades, just like that, we can develop technology that would treat GPU resources in a very similar way, in which you just submit your workloads and the system underneath realize, understands in real time how much resources every workload needs, and if a workload can give it up temporarily, if it gives, up, gives it up intentionally, so for this temporary, period of time, we can give these resources to another workload. So yeah, this is the holy grail, and the holy grail is to make GPUs very similar to CPUs, because nowadays when you submit CPU workloads, you don't really care about what, core, what CPU core is going to run on. The operating system does it for you. So we believe that you can achieve the exact same thing for GPUs, and no, it's not decades away. It's, it's here, and it's going, it's going to happen real soon, I believe it. Um, so earlier you had described a little bit about looking at like batch workloads and jobs in order to be able to kind of relieve the pressure on the GPUs. Is the primary spot that you're looking for to try and relieve this GPU pressure, like looking at being able, how do we move some of what we would know, what, that we might do interactively to job-based things, or like what does that continuum look like? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. I think I understand. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you're working interactively in the GPU, then uh, you do need the, the notebook and if you're doing interactive work on it. But I, I meant like the, um, if you're debugging or building a model and then you, you, you finished it and you want to train it for a long, a, long, um, a long time, that's where it's better that you switch to a job and not a notebook because what I, what I described. Does that answer your question? I think that's part of it, because like some, some of it, like even during that debugging cycle, like so I have a data scientist working for eight hours a day. They take that break, but they're still interactively looking at that. That is a, to me, like even as you described in the presentation, that's a period of time yeah. that like they went for lunch for an hour and a half. I yeah. could use that GPU somewhere else, but because it's, it's nominally an interactive job, that's still holding that GPU. Yeah. So can, I, can, yeah. can, I, can I relate to this? Right. So this is, this is a really great question. So yeah, here we presented some basic stuff that people can do nowadays. But if we're talking into more advanced stuff, then your, your point is, is really correct because we believe that, we, that you can have a system that detects this GPU idleness. And when you decouple these CPU resources from GPU resources, then you can leave the Jupyter Notebook running, the user can still use the GPU notebook for visualizing the data, for writing code interactively, but as long as nothing is running on the GPU, our system underneath can take the GPU resources to another pod that is, that is sharing in a controlled way by this system, and it's sharing the GPU resources. So you do, I mean, like, the holy grail is that you will not have to stop your job entirely. You just, you will just have a system that con manages it underneath. Does that answer? All right, thank you. Uh, did you get a chance to compare schedulers like Mesos versus Kubernetes? So, uh, so Mesos has a good, um, a uh, uh, scheduler called Dominant Resource Fairness, and it has a, it has a pretty good, uh, very decent scheduling algorithm, and 
you get a chance to compare and so that we can, you can uh, see how, uh, which is a better scheduler for resources like GPU. Um, All right, so, uh, yeah, we, we believe that we understand AI workloads in a, in a very intimate way because we go through all the stack. We go through the Kubernetes layer and the Linux layer and the GPU CUDA layers themselves, as well as the applications and frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch. So we believe that we can create a Kubernetes scheduler that is fully dedicated to AI workloads. And we believe, we believe that we can build the software that is needed in all these layers instead of relying on others to implement them for us. So I'm not familiar specifically with the scheduler that you mentioned, but internally we do have a lot of thoughts around existing schedulers, and we do, we do have our distinguishment between them, and I'm sure you can, we can talk about it later. Cool. Um, I have time for one more question, if anyone has one. I haven't already. Over there. Where are you? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Have you found that the um, provisioning and metrics differ by workload type? You know, a lot of what you've explained is really good for like batch processing, but you might have inference workloads on the same cluster that want to hold on to a GPU longer, and that might be you know appropriate for for that type of workload. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are m many types of AI workloads. For example, interactively building a model, training the model, and inference servers as well. And inference servers can be idle as well because they are waiting for new requests to arrive. So we can detect it and while, until these requests arrive, you can take these GPU resources to another workload. So this is, this is true also for inference clusters as well. Great. Um, well, yeah, thank, thank you again. Um, let's have another round of applause for uh, Raz and Natasha.